Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Things are heating up. The pressure is building. This financial market's about to blow. Stacey Hubbard. Max Kaiser. Yes. Before we get into Jamie Dimon's tirade, we have to look at this poster from Singapore. This is a JP Morgan advertisement in Singapore. We believe human behavior creates unique investment opportunities. Many investors make emotionally influenced decisions that can cause market irregularities. Well, that's what we've been talking about. That when banks like JP Morgan create chaos in markets using derivatives, people get frightened and they make irrational decisions and prices jump around. And who's there profiting from this? JP Morgan. This is a form of price propaganda. This is a form of financial terrorism. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan, by propagating this form of financial terrorism, is by definition a financial terrorist. Okay, so he agrees that human behavior can create unique investment opportunities, that this chaos can create opportunities. So when you read a headline like Jamie Dimon's tirade against bank regulators, he threw a hissy fit about a capital surcharge for the systemically uh, important banks. Dimon's tirade was directed at Mark Carney, Bank of Canada governor, in a closed door meeting in front of more than dozens of leading bankers and regulators, the Financial Times reports. According to the FT, things got so heated that Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein sent an apologetic email to Carney afterwards. Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> There's Blankfein doing the bad cop routine, screaming at a financial officer of another country uh, gets him completely frazzled and in comes smooth Lloyd, bald Lloyd, smooth coming in, talking him down, good cop, bad cop. And this is what we saw Tim Geithner in Europe trying to get Merkel to accept European TARP. Who are these American financial terrorists and why are they being allowed to roam the world and cause their destruction? Why can't someone put them in jail? Arrest them! Jamie Diamond in cuffs! Again. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of a bank, is in a closed door meeting that we don't know about other than the fact that he threw a tirade to our regulators and to a central banker. Now, think about the Occupy Wall Street guys being arrested, dozens and dozens of them, and maced in the face for walking down a sidewalk. Here's Jamie Dimon. Was he maced in the face? No, according to the reports, no, he wasn't. These bankers, the Lloyd Blankfeins and Jamie Dimons of the world, are able to meet in closed door meetings with regulators and screech at them. Now let's turn to this now infamous clip from the BBC where Alessio Rastani spoke to them. He spoke some truth. Everybody in the mainstream media is now dismissing him because, shock, he loses his own money when he trades. But Max, let's look at his answer when he, he was asked whether this European stabilization plan would work. What I would say to everybody is, get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. As we've been saying, Goldman Sachs rules the world. The, the bankers rule over the governments. We've been saying this for years now. This is, should not be a surprise. Now, the trader here is just saying, look, it's an adversarial relationship. I'm trading against you. You're my enemy. You, the person out there who has to work for a living. I get bailouts. I don't work for a living. I just take all the money the government gives me. I make bets. If I make a losing bet, they bail me out. You suffer. Ha ha. You're the loser. Well, he's saying, in fact, that all of you people out there waiting for your government to rescue you, they are not going to rescue you because they are working for the banks. The banks rule the world. You have to appeal to the bankers to step down, come out with your hands up, whatever it is. You have to talk to them because talking to your government is not going to do anything for you at this point because, as he says, the banks rule the world. And how many times has this Dick Durbin, the senator from America, also said this? He said the, gov the banks rule the place. So how many times do you have to be told? Right. I mean, I don't understand. Here you have the Occupy Wall Street folks. They're down there and they're wondering, well, we're here. Well, now what do we do? Well, they have to demand that the bankers come out with their hands up or they're going to go in. So here he is. He says that Goldman Sachs rules the world and the other big banks. Now let's 
turn back a little bit, wind back a bit in the, his interview where he explains the mind of a trader, how the trader, how a banker looks at the financial chaos in the world. For most traders, it's not about, it's that we don't really care that much how they're gonna fix the, how they're gonna fix the economy, how they're gonna fix the, uh, the whole situation. Our job is to make money from it. And personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. Uh, I, I, I had a confession which is, uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Why? Because uh, people don't seem to uh, maybe remember, but uh, the 30s depression, the depression in the 30s, wasn't just about a market crash. There were some people who were prepared to make money from that crash. And I think anybody can do that. It, it isn't just for some people in the elite. Anybody can actually make money. It's an opportunity. Well, well once again, it shows the asymmetric quality of this guerrilla warfare between traders that can profit in any market and the overall economy that can only profit in up markets. And not only that, but a down market, because it's driven by fear, happens quickly. So your annualized rates of returns are higher, so they have an incentive to create fear. Fear pays more than faith. Traders know this, and they love to stoke fear. And they are working against the general population, who can only have benefits if markets go up. So it's a completely asymmetric warfare, just like we see asymmetric warfare all over the world, where uh, the U.S. will go into Iraq, for example, and call that a war. As somebody once said, it's a war if somebody's shooting back. You know, here you have a financial war, but it would only be a war if the people getting abused by financial terrorists were shooting back in some way. But they're not. Okay, let's wind back a bit here, because he says bankers traders do not care about the economy they're only looking to profit now who gets appointed to run the economy in the united states in france in britain in germany in italy at the imf who are hired who are the head guys of the treasury secretary the uh, economic policy who gets to determine that former bankers at goldman sachs goldman sachs and J.P. Morgan. So this guy has just said, these guys don't care about the economy. No. So why are you putting them in charge of economic policy? Put Ben Bernanke in that camp. Ben Bernanke, the only thing he cares about is reinflating the housing bubble, which only benefits the bankers who are short those bonds that they got destroyed in the housing bubble collapse. He's not caring about workers, wages, economic growth, the viability of the U.S. economy, the, the U.S. standing abroad. I mean, think of what Bernanke's done to America standing abroad. He has trashed it. He's made America the laughing stock of the world. But remember, this now famous tweeter, Alessio Rastani, said that bankers don't care about the economy. Investors tell MPs bank reforms must be watered down. Top institutional investors have warned MPs the reforms proposed by the Vickers report must be significantly watered down to avoid damaging British banks. That's wrong. That's false. But as Alessio said, bankers love crashes. They profit on the way down. So let these banks crash. But now they're going crying to our MP saying, oh, you can't let us crash. So either they like crashes or they don't like crashes. What do they like? Classic uh, intellectual profile of a psychopath. <laughs> they, they go, t they, they are two-faced. They serve two masters uh, simultaneously. Uh, and they go to the regulators saying we don't want to crash and they hope to get mollycoddled by regulators like, oh, we'll, we'll have to fire a few bankers and then who will buy our yachts? Uh, in the back room, they're committing acts of financial terrorism, trashing themselves as a suicide banker, worse than any jihadi. The warning, which in effect was a demand for a radical U-turn from the government, was made at a secret meeting between leading investors and members of the Treasury Select Committee last week in the UK. Again, secret meetings. These bankers get to have face-to-face -face meetings with our representatives and threaten them. They threaten them with tirades. They shout in their face and they are never maced. No, oh, where is Nick Clegg in all this? Shouldn't he be carrying some pepper spray next time he meets one of these bankers from the city? Should what he about spray? Vince Cable? Vince Cable said it's a financial war. So what is he going into these meetings without any pepper spray to spray in their yeah, friggin' why? face? How come Vince Cable's not pepper spraying these bankers? Why is Vince Cable not bringing pepper spray into these meetings? Why is Vince Cable not bringing pepper spray into these meetings?
What else? Well, one senior investor said, quote, the banks are trading at half their book value. And if we're ever going to get our money back, the return on equity has got to be higher. This is not going to happen under the provisions laid out, i.e. higher capital reserve requirements. There's no book value. This investor thinks, well, there's some great deal there. Why doesn't he just buy the whole bank and then break it up and make it like twice as money? Because they've got 30 times their capitalization in liabilities on their balance sheet and the breakup value is a negative 5,000 uh, percent. This is what the problem is around the world. Uh, this is why the IMF has to bail out the banks, but the IMF is broke because they're made up of banks and they need a bailout from another series of banks who, by the way, need a bailout from another series of banks. They go round and round in this Mobius strip, a carousel of debt, musical chairs, and then once in a while, oh, well, Lehman's gone, then a Bear Stearns is gone. Now they're going to go after a big guy. You know, God, please make J.P. Morgan go away in this next musical chair roundup. We want to get rid of these terrorists. Please, please. Okay, Max, remember at the top of the show, we showed you a poster from JP Morgan to tell you that they signal to each other what the game is. Here's a, here's a signal, a headline from January of 2011, earlier this year, what we covered is from Davos. World needs $100 trillion more credit, says World Economic Forum. This is where all these guys, the Lloyd Blankfeins and Jamie Dimons of the world meet, and they say we need $100 trillion more dollars. Chutzpah. <laughs> Let's see about what they're doing to put that plan into action. Multi-trillion grand plan to save the Eurozone is being prepared. So European officials are, of course, planning a two trillion or three trillion or four trillion euro bailout. We don't know, it changes all the time, but they need to rescue the Euro system by November 4th before can. <laughs> before can. <laughs> Because the price of hookers goes up on November 4th. It's the winter rates. But listen, um, $100 trillion is the real number. And because that's what it's going to take to recapitalize the world's bank. But of course, that means every single currency must be recalibrated. And just about every single country in the world loses its sovereignty. And you've got an oligarch of global bankers running the show. And that's the new world order. OK, well, let's move back to the story here, because uh, let's see how this plan is going to work. They're saying first, the Europe's banks would have to be recapitalized with many tens of billions of euros to reassure markets that a Greek or Portuguese default will not upset the system. And then if the banks are unable to raise that money, those tens of billions on the private market, they said, well, they'll either go to the taxpayer or the European Financial Stability Facility, right? The second leg of the plan is to bolster the EFSF because apparently that doesn't have the money to bail out the banks that they say this cunning plan relies on. Right. So they've got both foot on both sides of a teeter-totter. Uh, they're balancing back and forth, juggling water balloons while being shot at by a BB gun held by a psychopath and claiming that's economic policy. All right, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Cars Report. Thank you, Max. That's going to do it for this half, but stay there. Much more coming your way.